Hey everyone, Kevin from SwiftKick here, and today I want to talk to you about one of my new favorite features of Signal R uh, for ASP.NET Core. And I think it's really interesting because I've been doing Signal R for an, a long, long time, and usually it's been the same old thing. It's been WebSockets, long polling, uh, server send events, and you you just you would do this real time work on the server and send it down to the clients. But there's been a couple use cases that I've had where we're trying to send down large amounts of data and sometimes single R isn't the most efficient approach to do it or we end up having to architect around some of the limitations that I've had with, with Signal R. Well, there's a new feature in Signal R for ASP.NET Core called streaming or Signal R streaming. And I wanna give you a quick demo of how it works and maybe if you find yourself in a situation where you could use this feature, uh, you, you can take advantage of it. So let's flip over to the code. So here on the screen, you can see what I call a traditional hub and a traditional hub method. I have a method, get random number hub method. I know, super descriptive, right? Uh, that takes a number of numbers. So I want to generate a list of X number or number of numbers, numbers, that uh, are all random and I will send that list back to whoever made the original call. And if you've done SignalR in the past, this is pretty straightforward. Generate our list of random numbers and then I want to tell SignalR to respond to the caller, whoever makes this initial call from a client, and tell them to execute their event or emit the event, uh, just call it number, on, on the client. We're going to pass that list of numbers uh, back to them. So this could be a pretty beefy uh, set of numbers that we sent. It could be 10, it could be 100, it could be a million. We really don't know until runtime. But how is this handled in a traditional application? Well, let's look at the client side code and see how that's traditionally handled. We create our connection. Uh, down here at the bottom, I do the connection.start. That's all just details that you probably already know. But then I have this little timeout here that after five seconds, we establish uh, the connection. Now I could probably listen for the start command and do it immediately, but I really wanted to give myself a little bit of a delay before diving in. So don't critique my code. I won't critique, critique yours. So traditional hubs is just an event handler. I am gonna listen for the event number. And when that event occurs, we're gonna collect the list of numbers from the server and write them all out to the console. We'll then tell the connection, go call the method on the server and we'll pass in 10,000 numbers. That's what we want. Let's go run this. So I load the tool, it waits a couple seconds, it went off to the server and it got all 10,000 numbers that I asked for. And you can see it here, there's, eh, trust me, there's 10,000 numbers here. When we're not gonna go through them all. Let's look at the WebSocket connection specifically because I think this is more fascinating than just looking at numbers in a console. If you make a connection with SignalR, either long polling or server send events or uh, WebSockets in our case, you can look at all the data that's going up to the server coming down to the client. Uh, specifically, here's the results that I get back from the server. This, this is a list of 10,000 numbers. And it's a pretty beefy list. Look at that size. So this is 104,000 bytes that come down. Well, if I'm processing all that immediately, it's I have to wait for that data to come down. Imagine it's more data, or maybe I have to go make additional calls to the server to process even more or even more. Is there a more efficient way that we could handle this similar use case, but not have to wait for one single big payload to come down? And this is where streaming comes into effect. And back in our hub, I'm going to collapse the traditional hub region. I'm going to expand another one called get random number. And this uses uh, signal R streaming to do the exact same thing that we just did. Uh, well, let's walk through the process. My client will call this method right here, get random number. It still takes a parameter, number of numbers, but it also takes a cancellation token. 
because this is a stream uh, streaming process, we can cancel it at any time. And if our server code gets that cancellation, we can bail out of our process without having to continue or execute the entire thing. With our old hub, we couldn't do that. You execute the entire thing and then send back the result. It, it wasn't set up for cancellation. Streaming is built around not an ASP.NET feature, it's built around just a .NET feature called channels. And there's very little documentation about channels up on the Microsoft Docs. I'm looking for more. I'm trying to get some answers because I have a lot of different questions about how channels work fundamentally. But I just copy and pasted some codes from the SignalR documentation and some of the samples. And we're going to talk through it and see what it does. To initialize the stream, we have to create the channel. And here I create an unbounded channel with the return time of integer. Um, because integer is the type that is going to get returned uh, for every object that we generate. Now, in the previous example, I created a list of integers and returned a list of integers. Well, because I'm not going to necessarily send the entire list back at one time, I'm going to send back one individual integer at a time. And that's why, so that's why I choose int. We have another method that we'll call externally called write random number. Now, this takes the writer to the channel. So the channel has two pieces, the writer and it has the reader. Now we're going to pass the, the stream that we'll write to, and we'll pass our other two parameters, the number of numbers and the cancellation token. Now this is technically asynchronous. Um, so the other method will do async await, and we, you would think that you should await on this method as well. And that's a, a no-no. You, you just have to deal with the curlies in this case, because you want that asynchronous method to just go off and do work while you, on the next line, return the reader for the channel back to SignalR and back to the client that initiates the call. The client will then use that reader to establish a couple different events that will happen during its lifetime. We'll talk more about that in a second. So write the item number takes its writer and our additional parameters. We'll still generate a random number. We'll for each through it. I'm sorry, for loop through it. And first thing we'll do is check the cancellation token. If the process has been canceled, we need to just bail out. If that happens on number 10 out of the 10,000, you know, that's okay. We've only dealt with 10 cycles. But if nothing happens, we go on to the next line, which is to write asynchronously to the channel. And we're just returning a random number. Now, write async also takes a cancellation token, just in case. You can pass that along, but it really doesn't make a big difference here because we're checking for it on the line before. Now this call is awaited because you want that to happen asynchronously and you want to wait for it to happen before going on to the next one. Uh, I think theoretically you could probably not put that in, just gun ho it and <laughs> write as many things to the channel as you can. I, I probably wouldn't do that. I would stick with the documentation and just await this call. And finally, when you're done, you do a complete. So you tell the channel, I am done doing the thing that I said I was going to do. And that channel effectively shuts down. Over on the client, let's go into the next call, which is how we set up streams. So I'll comment out some of my code here. And let's look how the stream is done on the client. We still have a signal art connection, but instead of setting up an event handler using on, we use stream. And the stream takes the name of the stream, or the stream method that we're going to call on the server, and then any parameters that we need to get passed into it. Effectively, this call to stream calls this method on the server. It gets back a reader, and then we can subscribe to different events inside of that reader. And three in particular that you are probably going to care about. Uh, the first one being next. So when any item in the stream is available, it calls this, um, this callback. When the entire stream is completed, so remember that try complete over on the server, we get a completed call. So we know we're officially done. There's nothing else to process. 
Uh, and then we also have an event to handle when errors occur because errors will probably occur in some way, shape or form. Now let's rerun this demo. Uh, still doing the same thing, but we're gonna look at what happens underneath the scenes. All right, my page is loaded. My WebSocket has connected. Now we're waiting and numbers are coming through. You can kind of see the console updates uh, a little bit by a little bit. And eventually we get done because everything has occurred. Now thinking of this compared to the last demo, not all the numbers came immediately. Uh, we didn't see done right away. It took a couple seconds. But let's go look at what was happening at the network level. Same WebSocket. I'm going to scroll this up. And you'll see I have a lot more frames that come down on the WebSocket. And there's a couple unique things that you might want to look at. Uh, some of these lines are just single numbers. They're JSON messages all by themselves. Then you have some that are combinations of different objects. This one has one, two, three, four, potentially more numbers associated with it. That's because underneath the scenes, SignalR streaming is batching these numbers where batching is appropriate. So it's really cool. It's doing this automatic performance monitoring and updating itself to be the most efficient pipeline possible. So I'm getting these numbers as soon as these numbers are available. We can check the timestamps and see that these numbers are coming in literally nanoseconds uh, between each other. There's very little difference in them. So we're getting these numbers immediately when they're available. I don't have to wait for the entire data set to be ready to go and then send that payload down. So this might be a more efficient way to stream data to get just enough uh, to get the user doing something and then eventually moving into loading more data afterwards. So keep, really something cool to keep in your back pocket. Let's look at one more example. So back in our code, I have this other method I wrote called get users. Because uh, I wanted to show you something that wasn't really just doing work in memory. What if we had an external service we had to talk to and pull data back from that? Uh, I'm going to set this up similar to how I set up the other demo. Uh, get users takes back a number of users and we pass back a stream. So specifically, I'm going to pass back a first name and a last name that I get from a data service. So I'll iterate through however many users I have to create check my cancellation token, but I'm going to make an HTTP call to, to an API called randomuser.me. If you've never looked at it before, it's fantastic. It just generates a random user and sends you back JSON for, for the person. Uh, we'll take that, parse it with JSON.net, says extract out the first name and the last name, and then we'll write that to our channel. So if this works properly, I should generate a very large list of users uh, in a sequence mode. The TypeScript is not different at all from get random number. It really, the difference is the name and the number of elements to create. Now I'm going to bump this up to 100 just so you can see things happening. We'll comment out the last call and give it a run. All right, so I have loaded, my WebSockets connected, and now the process should start. And you can see there's a, there's a list of names coming back, one by one by one by one. And eventually we're all done. And again, let's go look at the sources for our WebSocket. And you'll see these names took a little bit of time because I had that external dependency on the web service, when that name became available, I wrote it to the channel. The channel was ready to go and send it down to the server. Now, if I had a lot of traffic, uh, there was a lot of data flowing into the channel, SignalR would automatically batch that up in the most efficient way possible. So this ensures that I'm getting the data as quickly as I possibly can. So again, I think this is a much better solution than waiting for all that data to be available at once and then having one large payload. Uh, it's also more efficient from a parsing standpoint because this is JSON, there's less to process. 
just overall, I think a better solution to getting a lot of data down to a client uh, effectively, efficiently, eh, whatever you want to say. So I hope this was educational. I'm going to give you a link to a GitHub repository that has this demo as a part of it. The random user API is free to use uh, within constraints. And play around with it. Ask me any questions that you might have. I have a couple questions myself that I'm going to look on, look at answering. But uh, tell me what you think. Write a comment down below. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. I would love to chat with you more about anything.net or web. Thanks so much. Take care.